of Magalhães species of wild animals, or the CMS of 12. The event will take place in October of this year, October 22nd to 28th, at the Philippine International Convention Center in Pasay City. Our hosting of the CMS COP12 comes at the most opportune time when the Philippines is the current chair of the ongoing ASEAN meetings. In other words, we are now at the center of global attention. The DNR is particularly proud to spearhead this event in behalf of the Philippine government. Uh, but of course, there are other agencies of the government which are providing their full support to the DNR to ensure the successful implementation of this event. There are a dozen of them, including the DMA, the DND, the ILG, the ICT, the Department of Tourism, Department of Trade and Industry, Department of Agriculture, DOH, DBM, the, offices, the Office of the Cabinet Secretary, PCOO, and the MMDA. So why are we hosting the CMS COP12? This is very important to us. One, this marks the first time that the CMS conference will be held in Asia. Since the international treaty was adopted in Bonn, Germany in 1979 and entered into force in 1985. The Philippines became party to the CMS by virtue of Philippine Senate Resolution Number 28, Series of 1993. The DNR, through the Biodiversity Management Bureau, serves as the focal agency for the implementation of the Convention in the Valley and is tasked to manage the hosting of this event. Around 1,000 delegates are expected to participate in this event from 124 party states. These include high-level dignitaries and representatives of various international organizations, private companies and institutions recognized as champions of migratory species. We are also expecting delegates from the ASEAN member nations as well as local participants and observers. Second, the conference is aligned with the Philippine Development Plan, specifically with the key result area on integrity of the environment and climate change adaptation and solutions. Third, the COP is a good opportunity to work with other CMS parties on strategies and work programs for the continued protection of migratory species and enhanced transboundary cooperation on migratory species management, all of which contribute to achieving ecological integrity and thus climate change adaptation and mitigation. Migratory species are good indicators of the state of the environment. Their population trends serve as mirror of the ecological integrity of coastal and marine ecosystems, inland wetland ecosystems, and forest ecosystems. The Philippines serve as a major pathway for several species of migratory birds and marine animals. In fact, the country is part of the East Asian Australasian Flyway. We have several natural habitats that provide valuable transit points for migrating shorebirds as well as nesting sites for seabirds. Every year, around 150 species of migratory birds visit the country in various migratory sites, such as the Las Piñas, Paraña, Critical Habitat and Ecotourism Area, the Balanga City, Wetland Park, Nauhan Lake, Tubataha, Olambo, Negros Occidental, and Busan Marsh. Five of eight species of marine turtles are found here in the Philippines. The Turtle Islands remains the largest nesting site for green sea turtle in the entire Asian region. And the Philippines is also a major pathway and habitat for migratory sharks and, and rays, including 29 species of marine mammals like dolphins, whales, and dolphins. The theme for this year's conference is Their Future is Our Future, Sustainable Development for Wildlife and People. The theme highlights the fact that humans and wildlife are inseparably and dependent, dependent on, on each other and the interlinkages between nature conservation and attainment of the sustainable development goals. It also underscores the intrinsic value of wildlife species and our responsibility to protect them. It also reflects the contributions of wild animals to sustainable development 
and the many socioeconomic benefits people derive from them. Salamat po. Convention on Migratory Species. So, um, why is it important for us? It was also mentioned in the statement, but I would like to be more specific on the proposals that the Philippines is uh, will be filing at the conference. So, um, so if you look at the slides, we will, the Philippines will be uh, proposing several. Uh, uh, resolutions and decisions at the conference. So one, ito yung promoting marine protected area networks in the ASEAN region. The Philippines has been in the for for forefront of uh, marine protected areas, uh, establishing marine protected areas. And we recognize that uh, the, the, the protest the migratory species kasi move across boundaries, so we cannot have um, uh, effective protection of migratory species if we don't have a network of protected areas. So this is the reason why we want to, uh, to propose for a resolution on marine protected area networks so we can have uh, cooperation and coordination among the countries, among the range states, specifically in the ASEAN, a very opportune time to do that because we are the host of the the, the ASEAN uh, summit this, this year, ASEAN leaders meeting this year. So th this would be a good uh, opportunity to have a resolution to encourage non-parties and range states of some of the migratory species uh, and see how we can be able to uh, work together to come up with networks of protected areas, each within their own jurisdiction, but it's just a cooperation to make sure that uh, we take into consideration the migration pathway of the species that we are protecting across the Asia and the ASEAN region and Oceania. Uh, in the in the Convention on Migratory Species, the, um, the Philippines is a uh, part of the Oceania region kasi uh, yung migration pathway is Australasian uh, flyway, part tayo ng flyway na yun. Okay. So, that's one resolution, yung promoting marine protected area networks. The next resolution, yung promoting conservation of critical intertidal and other coastal habitats for migratory species. Uh, we recognize that uh, this habitats, yung mga coastal habitats and intertidal habitats, yung mga uh, mga uh, oh, mga tidal flats, no? uh, intertidal flats, uh, and then uh, mga mangroves, these are important, uh, seagrass beds, 
these are important uh, habitats for uh, migratory species, mga migratory, feeding areas din ng migratory birds. And so these are, we recognize that these are most vulnerable because of uh, uh, certain uh, uh, challenges, no? like uh, uh, several mga, de mga unsustainable development activities. So this resolution we call upon parties to enhance efforts to conserve and promote uh, the sustainable use of intertidal wetlands and other coastal habitats. Hopefully this will be supported by the parties at the convention. Next, resolution is on sustainable tourism. Uh, we recognize that uh, the Philippines' primary tourism attractions are our biodiversity. So, kasama na dito yung migratory species natin. A lot of tourists come to the Philippines just to do a uh, bird watching or whale shark watching and uh, marine turtle watching. So, these are all migratory species and it's important that we recognize the value of uh, the migratory species for sustainable tourism and at the same time, we, we would uh, we we would like to espouse that uh, that uh, there should be certain uh, measures uh, that will uh, allow us to promote tourism at the same time protect our migratory species. So, may mga code of conduct. Actually, the Philippines is now developing a code of conduct for for uh, nature tourism for for whale shark watching. We will start watching together with the Department of Tourism. So, hindi naman, pagdating sa migratory species kasi, hindi lang naman Pilipinas dapat yung nag-make ng effort, but all throughout the, the range of migratory species. And that, that's why it's important to have a resolution at the convention para yung effort natin, hindi lang tayo nag-iisa sa Pilipinas, but we will be working with other range countries in the, in, uh, under the convention. Uh, fourth resolution is a concerted action for the whale shark. Uh, we all know that the whale shark is an iconic species for the Philippines. It's a threatened species and the Philippines is a major uh, pathway for whale sharks. And uh, we want to promote collaboration among parties to improve the protection of the whale shark wherever they go. Uh, so that we reduce the impact on the whale shark population from vessel strikes and from unsustainable tourism practices. So those are the four resolutions ng policy. Uh, we have other resolutions ng listing naman. Kasi sa, migrat, sa convention, aside from the policy resolutions, nagpapalista rin tayo under Appendix 1, 2, or 3 ng, ng CMS. Uh, Yusef Jonas will be presenting later yung details on the on the what it means to be in CMS Appendix 1, CMS Appendix 2, or Appendix 3. Pero ito yung uh, ito yung mga proposals natin for the appendices. Uh, next. Yeah, ito. A listing. Uh, a listing of the whale shark. Sa ngayon, ang whale shark is nasa Appendix 2 under the CMS. And because the entire Philippines is uh, really a, a migratory pathway for the whale shark and we need to work with the other countries. Uh, ito yung mga ibang countries na, na meron din whale shark. Uh, Madagascar, Mozambique, Pakistan, Peru, Portugal, and Tanzania. And also in the, in the Pacific countries, Pacific Island countries. And so it's important kasi some of these Yung mga same population na dumadaan sa atin, yun din yung mga dumadaan dun sa ibang, ibang mga countries, especially in the Pacific Islands. And um, so it's important that we have a, a concerted effort and then uh, dahil threatened yung population ng, ano, ng whale shark, we want to move it from Appendix 2 to Appendix 1 para mas... Uh, mas mahigpit yung pangangalaga natin ng whale shark all throughout the, the range. Next, okay, itong black noddy, 
Uh, sa Pilipinas, nakakita to mostly sa Dubatahi National Park. Uh, and ang migration route nito, pumupunta rito sa Malaysia and sa Indonesia. And medyo, because we are losing some of the breeding habitats, we need to uh, in consultation with our scientists, uh, it may, meron ang need for it to be placed under Appendix 2 so of the CMS, the Convention on Migratory Species. So, it's again, kailangan meron na tayong mga international or regional cooperation for the protection of the black nadi or the Arusminitus pinutus versus the nadi. <laughs> and then, um, ito, uh, yung wedge fish, white spotted wedge fish. Ayan, nakikita yan sa Palawan, sa Tumatahan, nakikita na yan. Tapos recently, may sighting din sa Camarines Norte. Unfortunately, sa Palengke nakita. So, dapat yun dapat na yun. Dapat na yun. Anyway. <laughs> oh, so, dapat. Mas maganda rin. Ah, nakikita sila underwater. Um, yung my, oh, migration route, Southeast Asia, Australasia, Thailand, Taiwan, and Indonesia. So, that's why so, pinapainood natin sa Appendix 2 para medyo ma-reduce yung threats. Appendix 2, pwede na tayo mag-cooperate in Southeast Asia with Australia to be able to protect the, the species. And uh, yun nga, it demand siya from, from uh, overfishing. Next. Okay. Still, the, the Ricobatus Australia. Next. Uh, ito naman yung frigate bird. Nakikita rin ito sa Palawan. And uh, global migratory range, Australia, Christmas Island, Brunei, Darussalam, Cambodia. So, yeah. so almost uh, all uh, uh, sa ASEAN and then some Asian countries may hunting by fisher folks and can be trapped in fishing gear. So uh, since nag-delay ng exito sa Christmas Island lang, so, siguro yung kailangan concerted yung, yung, yung protection uh, natin no, in Asia and the uh, rest of the range countries. So, we proposed that it would be uh, included in, in the CMS appendices. Next, ito yung yellow bunting. Emberisa sulfurata. Sulfurata. Sa Sulfurata, Appendix 2. Uh, ito, dito sa Pilipinas, sa Ilocos and Northern Luzon. So, talagang supportado namin to. And, um, yan. So, with wintering dito. So, winter, nagpupunta siya dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, nasa Japan siya during most of its uh, life stages. Uh, during uh, summer, nandun siya sa Japan, tapos pag nag-winter na doon, hindi pa siya sa punta siyang Ilocos. Kaya medyo marunong siya ng Japanese siya kay Luan. <laughs> tapos, decline has been a result of a combination of habitat loss, high levels of pesticide use, and the upgrade with the Next. Okay. Uh, yung number 10 is yung Manila Declaration on Sustainable Development. Yung high level event natin will be on uh, October 22. So, May October 22, around uh, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. there will be high-level uh, representatives. May mga ministers who will be coming. Uh, and uh, also, uh, um, um, the Executive Secretary of the Convention on Biological Diversity will be coming and also ng CITES, the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species of Flora and Fauna, darating sila for the high levels of it. And uh, some ministers in ASEAN and also in Africa and Europe. So, I think, okay, so yun yung ano, tas hopefully mag-come up, we are expecting that a Manila Declaration will be issued 
during that time to focusing on the, the migratory species and their role in, sustain, in the sustainable development goals. And then yung high level uh, Manila Declaration will be transmitted to the UN General Assembly for adoption in December of 2017. Uh, okay, so uh, yung mga resolutions that I presented were uh, were already agreed upon at the level of the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources because some of the species are marine species and also with the scientific uh, experts and other stakeholders. Uh, uh, yeah, so the, those are the Philippine drafts the resolutions that we hope the conference will be adopting. So, uh, uh, so yung mga country, yung bawa, pwede, sa East Australasia tayo, pwede ka magkaroon ng mga agree agreements. So, hindi pa totally global yung effort, pwede international, uh, pwede regional, depende sa range countries. Kung why is there a need to uplist the region? Kasi, because of the conservation status, we feel that it is uh, more endangered now than it was before uh, because of meron pa rin, meron pa rin ano, incidences of, uh, of poaching, hunting and hindi when we talk about migratory di lang sa Philippines yan but all throughout its range may mga ganun. So we need Kumbaga, kahit ma, ma lumabas sa Pilipinas at pagpumunta sa ibang countries, pwede i-hunt doon. So we feel that there must be uh, you know, a, a coordination, cooperation among countries in the world, hindi lang sa rich countries, pero lahat ng mga, uh, lahat, parang, kasi pati market, dapat ma-reduce din yung market kasi syempre wala namang commercial, walang poaching, walang market. So, ma-reduce yung market. So, we're hoping na mas maraming makaka-appreciate yung rules. Kung so, ma-affect mo ba? Kasi, is it sa mga responsibility ng whale shark watching? Ma-affect mo ba? Ah, hindi. Uh, well, you will work whale shark watching na sustainable. So, yung halimbawa, um, yung mga efforts, kasi since may migratory sila, they need to move around to complete their life cycle. So they breed somewhere else, they breed somewhere else, and then they also, uh, uh, they, 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 they mature somewhere else. So meron silang life cycle. So pagka ito ay, uh, na hindi na di-disturb sa dun sa ating mga sustainable tourism activities, uh, hindi naman yun ma-affect. Hindi ma-affect. Kasi that's why dito mismo we are promoting sustainable tourism. So gusto naman natin, may revenue tayo na nag-generate. And we wa want to show that the migratory species are more valuable alive than, than, uh, than not alive. Reports po ba kayo? Para sa 
may mga ganong hindi dapat na. That's why we are coming up with the with the guidelines for real shark watching. Kung masyado yung madaming tao, yung over, uh, pag nag-exceed ganong kaya capacity para dun sa real shark watch, ganyan. May mga ganong guidelines tayo. We are coming up with that along with the Department of Tools. So, hopefully, yung guidelines natin, ma-share natin with the other countries and uh, yung other countries will be able to learn from our experience so yung ating coordination would be uh, would be uh, accepted would be ano would be highlighted in the in the in the form uh you said uh adobo is here and he has been leading the preparations for the for the conference of the parties so far. So he's also ready to take questions or make statements. Uh, my apologies. I, I know this is scheduled at 10, <coughs> but uh, we have to rush to the House of Representatives uh, for the budget uh, preparation for our state of the face Congress. Uh, and Tuesday, but we have to talk to our sponsor. So there was the reason I came late. And, um, my apologies. Uh, I understand. Uh, and again, my, my also co chair delayed. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, got to come and dig me. Okay. Primarily, we, we wanted to formally invite uh, the members of the media to attend the event. You can register online for free. Registration is free. So, sana mag-cover din. It has been said earlier, ulitin ko lang, this is the first time the Philippines will host uh, a meeting of this huge. Uh, this is the first vote that will be held in the Philippines. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the first vote of the nation? The first one, yeah. The Secretary of the CMS and has been wanting Philippines to host uh, at least the, the third attempt. Their attempt to convince Philippines to host the, the this scope. No? Um, and the third uh, offer, offer, we accepted it. So we've been doing preparation for the last two years, uh, over over a year, uh, we believe everything is ready. Um, the, the importance of holding the COP uh, in the Philippines is we can establish a, a, a show window to the world um, what the Philippines can offer, actually, uh, <coughs> apart from, of course. Uh, <clears throat> incidentally, Philippines is the only, as a young country, which is a party state to the convention. Tayo lang. Uh, the Secretariat has been working closely with us for us to be able to convene other eight ASEAN, ASEAN member state to be a member of uh, the convention, to be a party to the convention. Um, if you, you are familiar with <coughs> the regional grouping, you will notice in CMS, it, it's kind of weird now. We are not part of Asia. 
in the regional grouping as far as uh, um, CMS is concerned. We belong to the Oceania region. And the reason for this is that the Philippines is part of the East Asian Flyway. East Asian Australian Fly Pathway, Pathway uh, of the migration. So yun, yun ang reason po. Uh, baka mali ito kayo later on, bakit uh, uh, isipin nyo mali yung we belong to in this instance, we are part of Oceania region, the regional group in the UN. If you have some other questions, uh, you should join us here. It's ready to <laughs> answer them. Sir, is there a comparison? Like, kung gaano kalahing budget mo ipinababa? Nandiyan, are you sure para po sa sustainable development mo ng mga Actually, uh, wala bang, hindi naman naka-disaggregate sa ngayon, pero naka-lump siya as part of our wildlife uh, conservation function. Ikilalang namin sa inyo yung ano, kung magkano yung total sa wildlife conservation. Pero yung disaggregation kung ano yung para sa migratory species, hindi. Kasi we consider naman all wildlife important. Meron hindi kasi tayong mga endemic species, yung mga only found in the Philippines. Pero kasi mas tumaas pa po ba yung budget? Yung budget namin this year for the COP? Yeah, no. Tumaas this year kasi we're hosting the COP. It's part of our... Uh, uh, it's part of our advocacy. So we're hoping that uh, this year, with the, some investment for the hosting of the COP, we will, it's a, ano yun, para we will uh, uh, be able to, uh, ano to generate uh, more support for migratory species uh, and, and endemic species as well. Hi. Good morning po. Kay Ma'am Mundita po. Ma'am. Ma'am, apart from those included in the presentation, meron pa po ba tayong ibang species or meron tayong total number species to be um, parang to be addressed dito sa COP? Apart from those included in the presentation. proposals galing sa ibang panties. Uh, actually, meron kami may ongoing meeting ngayon sa sa, Jerk, sa uh, Asia. So, meron din mga listings doon. Pero, tayo, uh, Philippines, as sabi nga ni Yusek June, may meeting ang Oceana, pre-cop meeting at the end of the of the month, para i-consolidate lahat ng mga susuportahan ng Oceana region. So, meron din mga proposals from other countries. I think meron din ng like, Samoa. Blue Shark. Uh, Samoa, may proposal siya sa Blue Shark. Mukhang, mukhang susuportahan din natin yan. But we will need to discuss it with the other members of the region at the end of the month. Pero ma'am yung sa Philippines, 35. Okay. 35, lahat ng Proposing, oh, so including so, from other countries. So, yung sa atin lang, ang spearhead natin, yung kanina. Okay. Hold muna natin yung press call. Press call. Open forum. Mag-represent si Yusek Jonas. Okay, he says. Thank you, Ms. Marisa. Magandang umaga
as I understand it, you uh, said Kajun has represented the purpose of our pop, no pop 12. Ang represent us sa media. Eh, ano ba yung pop na you host natin? What is the importance of this pop? Why do we host this pop? Ano yung mga mga bagay na inasa natin? Ano yung mga benefits? What can what benefits can be derived out of this uh, hosting? So actually, yung convention sa migratory species, or we call it bond convention, it's an inter intergovernmental treaty under the aegis of the UNEP. No? And it aims to conserve terrestrial, marine, alien migratory species throughout the range. So meaning, hindi lang yung sa atin, ito yung mga dumadalo sa lugar natin. Yung mga, like for example, yung avian species, uh, nasa ibang bansa, pumunta rito for So, ito yung mga, yung within the race, ito yung dapat protectan natin. And then, uh, the signatories uh, of this convention is uh, 100, uh, 124 parties since its entry into force in 1983. The Philippines acceded in 1993 through Philippine Senate Resolution Number 28, uh, series of 1993. Next. So, ito yung mga threats na nangyari sa mga migratory species when, when they uh, uh, move from one side to another side. So, nakaka-encounter sila ng mga ganyan by, by catch in fishing nets. So, yung mga iba na no place to land because of conversion of the habitat. And then, of course, pollution. And then, uh, pollution to man-made uh, structures. Yung mga mataas na mga buildings. And uh, may mga problem pa kami minsan na yung mga dinadaanan ng pat ng bird. Isa na daanan din ng aeroplano. So, ito yung mga threats ng uh, migration ng mga species. Next time. So, ito yung tinatanong kanina ni Dek, yung mga CMS appendices. When we say species under the appendix 1, these are species that are threatened with extinctions. And the CMS uh, mandates uh, all members to strictly protect this uh, type of species when you're included in the appendix 1. And appendix 2, we call it uh, unfavorable conservation status to be conserved through international agreements. This means that these are vulnerable species that, that has not reached the stage of being threatened. So, pwede silang makonsperate pa silang medyo, medyo malapit na sila sa, sa uh, extinction, but hindi pa siya mapapasok sa appendix 1. But uh, if the species are under this uh, category, so this can be conserved through international agreements, mga bilateral agreements. Next slide. And then these are the types of uh, international cooperations. It could be, it could be an, uh, it could be an agreements, the agreements ng uh, dalawang parties, uh, meaning uh, binding between two parties. There is a legal implication when we speak of legally binding treaties. And memorandum of understandings. These are informal. Iba usapan lang, usapan na lang eh, na dapat ito serve natin. But there's, usually there's no sanctions when you, when you do not comply with the uh, MOUs. Next. So this, uh, balik na sa, balik sa slides. Uh, slides. Uh, these are examples of uh, yung mga natin, MOUs. No? MOUs natin, memorandum of understanding natin sa dugong. Uh, marine turtles and uh, sharks. No? So, ito yung mga natin. MOU lang yan. Next. So, these are the structure na we follow the, how, how CMS operates. No? So, there is a conference of party. So, ito yung decision-making body. No? Review implementation, adopt resolution, and amend CMS uh, appendices. So, Sinasabi ni Director Mundita kanina, so sila yung nag-review ng uh, mga resolutions. They approve the resolution. Kung mara mo, we need to uh, include these species under Annex 1. So sila nag-decide nun. And then, but before the, si, the POP or the members of the POP decide on the things that will be uh, decided upon, meron tayong nasawag na scientific council. Sila yung nag-review kung ano yung dapat na agenda. And then there is also a standing committee. So these, these are the uh, groups that uh, assist the POP um, to, uh, to evaluate whether the resolutions or adoption or resolutions can be adopted or not. Then there's also a secretariat. So 
So within the secretariat, there are many types of working groups. Ito yung mga katrabaho uh, sa babana natin. Okay, next. So these are the CMS benefits. No? Uh, Transboundary conservation of migratory species, including those important uh, to the country or for ecotourism. Remember new Andava, di ba? Usually, yung mga ibo do po punta. And then, it becomes, uh, this became now a uh, magandang ecotourism site for bird watching. So, yeah. so we need to protect this, uh, this uh, avian species. Right? Kung wala na sila doon, then ecotourism will be affected. Okay? And then there is a collaborative researches between rich states. So meaning, sabi ng U.S. Secretary, it is at Asia Pacific. Under these conventions, we are included, the Philippines is included in another region, uh, Oceania. Uh, Oceania. So doon tayo nakadahe, tayo lang yung member pa doon sa Oceania group. And then, because of the CMS, perhaps, we can recruit, we can recruit uh, other member states to join also dito sa uh, conventions. Uh, pero tama rin na tayo lang, tayo pa lang yun naging member dito sa convention state. And then, there should be a benefit and scientific guidelines to better manage migratory species of their habitat. So, uh, other countries can help us and even support us and sabi nga yung better access to national cooperation conservation funds. So, we can, sabi ni Karina, aside from our uh, funds from the, our regular uh, appropriations or allocations, we can also access international funds kung yung, yung part ng uh, mga avian, uh, avian marine terrestrial species kasama sa range pinupuntahan nila, then we can probably access some funds to protect these migratory species. Okay, next. So, yung conference of parts is very significant, significant to us because it only meets three times every, uh, once every three years. So, last hosting was in Ecuador in November 2014. So, dahil sa gusto nilang pumunta sa atin at uh, negotiations ng, uh, during that call. So, the parties decide, or the Secretary of decides that we hold it this year in the Philippines. So, some resolutions adopted at the time during the hosting in Ecuador, it came mga resolutions. For example, is marine, management of marine debris, program of works on migratory birds, Prevention of illegal killing, taking migratory rate of migratory birds, and so on. So basically, this will this thing will also happen in October during the convention. So we will be uh, proposing some resolutions, and then uh, we can ask the pop to adopt resolutions that could could benefit our country. So yung tanong kayo na ni Dek, ito na yun, ito yung mga samples ng mga parties natin. For example, Irawadi Dolphin. Ayan, nasa, ano siya, nasa Appendix 1, meaning threatened na ito. And then, uh, it has to be protected by the parties. No? And then, for example, uh, Pantropical Spotted Dolphin. Annex 2. So meaning, vulnerable siya. Hindi siya strictly to be protected, but uh, you know, if we will not uh, protect this species, there will come a time na uh, this will become already threatened and near uh, extinction. So, nasa appendix to siya. And this kind of species can be protected by uh, bilateral agreements, international agreements, but not under the convention. Okay? So, ito yung mga samples ng mga uh, appendix 1 and appendix 2 species ng Filipinas na under the convention. Okay? Next. So, ito na yung ngayon, yung team natin, uh, yun, ito yung CMS COP12, 2011, last three, three years ago. So, ang ating team will be their future, is our future, sustainable development for wildlife and people. So, this team, hindi naman siya overnight, no? Talagang diniscuss ito ng mga, mga meeting at pinonsult yung sa COP, kung ano yung appropriate team for this, uh, for this uh, October convention. <coughs> So, maraming pinagdaanan yung uh, discussion dito sa team na susunod. No? And then, ito na yung nangaling yung result. No? Ito yung team. And then, the banner species, if you will uh, notice, yung whale shark, the condon tipus. So, ito yun, no? Ito ba yun? Director mo dito, no? Yeah. And then, uh, kaya sabi natin malaki, medyo uh, 
kailangan na natin ng media to rampage these conventions because we will be expecting approximately 1,000 participants from the 134, 124 countries, including observers. Yung asaya na pinuntahan natin dito last, uh, last month or last week was only mga 500 to 700. But ito, ang dami 1,000. So, we really need your support, uh, members of the media, to to drum beat this convention so that uh, our people will know that we have this convention. Okay, so, next slide. I think that's all. So, I think an expected output pala natin during the COP12. We will be reviewing strategic plans for migratory species which regularly updated every COP meetings. Uh, Amended of CMS appendix to consider migratory species to be afforded special attention by CMS member countries. So if we find that uh, if we, if there will be proposal to include one species in appendix one, appendix two, or we want to upgrade appendix two to appendix one, so this is the uh, right venue to do that. Then resolutions on the strategies or program specific migratory species and, uh, and so on. So these are the expected output. Next. Expected outcome, so outputs from the CMS COP will serve as a framework and guide on developing programs of work on the conservation of migratory species of the country that is coherent with strategies and action plans under the multilateral environmental <coughs> conventions and development of national guidelines and programs for sustainable use of migratory species. So I think that's all. So opportunities for participation to the COP12. This will contribute to the development of the draft resolutions for consideration of the CMS COP12. Participate in crafting different positions on draft resolutions by other parties for deliberation during COP12. Contribute to the Philippine exhibits and there will be also side events that will be organized during the COP12. Next. So thank you for, uh, for listening. If you have questions, we have here music tune. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, if you might ask, um, where can you find the migratory sites? I can give you some. Uh, Las Piñas is superior to the Nihan Municipal. So, yung Las Piñas, Paranyan, the Critical Habitat, the Ecotourism Area. That's, of course, in Las Piñas. Uh, there is one in the province of Balaan, Balaan City, Wetland, Wetland Park, uh, in Oriental Vindoro, No One Lake National Park, in Palawan, Tubatahari National Park, Cebu, Olangu Island Wildlife Sanctuary, in Negros Occidental, Negros Occidental Wetland Conservation Area, and in Mindana, um, a Busan Marsh Wildlife Sanctuary, which is located in the province of Busan del Sur. Those are some of the migratory sites. Hindi na mention yung peri na sinabi ni Yusik Jonas, mas popular yata yung kandaras. No? Ito yung mga more popular sites, migratory sites. Other issues. Other issues. What issues? What are the 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 issues? What are Oh, sige. Caroline. Sir, um, sir, yung ibang mga uh, environment, uh, envi environmental groups, um, sinasabi po nila na okay daw po yung pagsasala ng payatas. Pero,